Hey, Miles. Um, we, we forgot to ask you about the best part of your uh, sack last week, and that was that you got to uh, send $5,000 to Waterboys for that, right? So uh, how happy were you about that? It's amazing. You know, I know it's going to a good cause, and people are going to get a lot out of it. I'm hoping to have a, uh, a couple wells built off of the season I'm not one to have, but, but I just got to take a one. One game at a time. You know, the second best part was you know, a little tribute to Chadwick Bozeman with my my celebration. I, I know I was a little bit amped after the, the first one, but after I settled down, I gave him a little sack celebration tribute. And you know, those two things, they, they mean a lot. Good. Uh, but are those those are the kinds of plays that you know even coming into this season? That's the kind of thing that you're talking about, right? Not just um, you know, not just a sack, but a strip, uh, change the game, affect the game, and be a huge reason why you guys win, right? Yeah, I want to be a part of the reason we win every game. So you know, we're going to need more of those and more frequent. So just seeing see how I can uh, be disruptive, you know, whether I'm, I'm getting there, getting those those sacks or pressures, or I'm, I'm taking on two, three guys and having my, my guys get free and getting those sacks and, and big time plays. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Kay. Nate Ulrich, you're up. Hey, Miles, uh, you've called for justice uh, for Brianna Taylor with us here on Zoom before and on social media. We talked to some of the players yesterday, Odell and Jarvis, about the decision, and I was wondering if you had any thoughts you wanted to share about it. I, mean, I believe the decision isn't right. All three of them, all three of the officers should have been held accountable for their actions. It's just, it's a shame. It's a shame. I, I, don't, I don't think their actions, the, the way they chose to go about things and the result of you know, her losing her life, I don't see how they, they can come off, or at least two of them come off scot-free and not be just or held accountable for for the death of, of someone who was in, in my eyes innocent of any wrongdoing in that in that time. And so anybody you know barging through someone's home when one their different accounts of whether they announce themselves or not, I don't think one it should be it shouldn't be right for him to shoot uh, at someone coming into his house when uh, for him for him to be held account for someone shooting shooting at someone coming into his house when he doesn't know that someone's uh, coming. Now, I don't think he was doing, had any wrongdoing. I don't think he was drug dealing. I believe that was her, her, her ex-boyfriend. So them, you no know, barge again and him have the right to defend his home and the people in it. And then them shooting back, you know, through the, through the walls and you know, not knowing really what they're, they're aiming at, you know, that all the, the missed shots that were, that were fired, all the shots that could have hit anybody else in the, in the complex. I just don't see how that's, you know, safe protocol. I don't see how you can't have you can't hold these guys accountable for, for wrongdoing, you know, with you know, how they they handled that situation. Am, am I a police officer? No. I always say, you know, I hope these, these guys in, in high regard because they do a job that most of us us could. But just like in in our line of work, if you're not able to do the job in strenuous situations, if you're not able to to, to do it with the best of them, you, know, you, sh you shouldn't be here. And so we have to we have to hold them accountable for for making the right call. Just about every time, and those strenuous and stressful situations where their their number is called and they have to make those those tough calls, they have to make the right one. And if you can't, then you know, we have to we have to get someone who can. And they shouldn't be allowed to to move from one place to another if they're not able to make those tough calls, and get a second chance when we. We've seen their their track record. We've seen what they they 
how they've handled situations before. So I don't know. It, it was tough. It was tough. Sorry, Miles. To see. Sorry. Um, I, I don't know if uh, anything's changed since yesterday. Jarvis and Odell had said that the Social Justice Leadership Committee hadn't really gotten together to talk about the ruling yet, but they, they hope to be able to talk about it kind of as a team, as a group. And I was just wondering, you know, if if anything's changed, if, if that has happened, or if you hope it will happen, or if there's anything that the Social Justice Leadership Committee will do as a tribute or as a result of that ruling, or if anything you'll do personally. Thank you. It wouldn't be this game that we haven't had a, a chance to get together, talk, and you know, plan on what we want to do for that. You know, there's you know, a lot of different ways we can pay tribute or get a message across you know, because of the verdict that was given. So, see, well, no, we'll, we'll have a, a meeting early next, and then we'll be able to do something in response to that. Thank you. Our next question will be from Scott Petrick. Hey, Miles, did you get anything out of that? Or what did you get out of the meeting Tuesday? Um, Joel said you guys met with the Cleveland police chief and some of the councilmen. I know he was shining a, a positive light and all the things they've been doing to take positive steps and uh, show that they they don't want to have any more incidents than you know, than we've had in, in the past, and you know, trying to to maintain a a healthy and consistent relationship with you know, the communities that they they deal with. And, uh, it was very positive. It, was, it had a had a lot of things going for them, but I wanted to hear about the you know, where they feel like they fall short, and how they how they feel like they could have they can. You know, use that's where they they really need our help. There was a lot of things. You know, it was it was a lot of talk about you know Tamir Rice and you know, a couple of cases that happened you know years back and how they they grown and evolved since then and tried to you know, put pressure on you know, the force to to change their ways and to to interact with the people they serve differently but you know, life has changed since then and it's changed rather quickly you know with uh, the injustice that's going on in America today and how we how we trying to make a, a difference here how we trying to to start something that could you know lead to a domino effect that can go all throughout Ohio and uh, be kind of the Example for for other town, cities, and states. So that's that's really what I wanted to hear about. And uh, you know, he was he was you know, trying to you know, talk about you know, all the good things that they're doing, which they they are doing a lot of good things, and they are setting a better example than you know, most would give them credit for. And I appreciate you know, him listening to you know, the people who have made an effort to to contact them and you know, tell them what they need to improve on. And I just want to get the social justice committee together and you know, ask them you know, how they feel and, and how we, how we can you know, fit in in this uh, this plan, this scheme to, to make things better for, for all of us. Thanks. Next up will be Jeff Shadell. Hey, Miles. Um, when you look at Dwayne Haskins' numbers, they don't jump off the chart, but what, what do you see in him that makes him a, a good quarterback? Or us. Not, just, not scared to scramble, not scared to, I guess, gamble either. But he, you know, he's he's a, a fearless young man. You know, he's he's taught well, he gets the ball up quick. He, he tries to keep to his, uh, his, uh, Scheduled throws and a three-step drop, get it out, five-step drop, get it out. He doesn't try to take too long in the pocket. And sometimes he gets caught up. He, you know, he he sees things that that uh, are getting sat on, but for the most part, he's he's coming on pretty nicely. And you know, I like how his, his game is is developing. I think he has a uh, a promising you know career ahead of him. 
And so we have to just you know, try and you know, take advantage of those those quick early ones and get them to those long third downs, which they don't like to to allow him to have uh, freedom on and make make him make those those big throws that you know, he hasn't had to make. Okay, thanks. We have time for two more questions. We'll take one from Mary Kay Cabot and one from Nate Ulrich. Mary Kay, your line is open. Hey, Miles, I know you probably don't have a lot of time to watch uh, opposing defensive linemen, but have you taken a little peek at Chase Young yet? Are you, you know, pretty aware of his game? And, uh, you know, if so, kind of what do you think of him in terms of joining the uh, the ranks of of edge rushers like yourself in, in the NFL so far? I think he looks good. You know, he's he's two and a half sacks deep already, and that's a that's a good pace for you know, the first two. And you know, when you're on a roll, you, you want to stay on a roll. So they're going to look to to feed the hot hand and the and the young fella. So he's going to go out there with a little chip on his shoulder. So I like his game. I like how he gets after. You know, he has his good timing off the ball. And he has good hands, and uh, he's tenacious when he's. You know, going at the pass. He's, he's definitely not a, a bad run defender. So he's, he's, a, he's a pretty complete player, and uh, I like his game. When you look all across that, that line, is it pretty amazing that they've got all those first-round picks and, and just so much talent and so deep across the line? Yeah, we had, we had our own run of a, a lot of first-round picks, so it's not surprising that things – Things happen to fall that way sometimes, and you know, they they use their their money and their their picks on getting you know, some some big time big time players up front, and uh, they can ball, they can they can rush, and they can they can they can play pretty good defense. And we're going to you know, find their find their weaknesses. We're going to try to you know, establish the run, and you know, see what we can do from there. Thank you. Time for one quick one from Nate Ulrich. Miles, people talk about football. They talk about quarterbacks matching up, like you know Brady and uh, and Peyton Manning, legendary matchups. They don't talk about Miles Garrett and Chase Young, like you no, know, they just don't talk about two DNs. But is there a competition in a way in your mind? Do you want to be the best DN on the field in a given game? I want to be the best player on the field in a given game. So and I, I want to whoever the best player is. Or you feel like I want to be matched up against them. And uh, another guy for Washington, Scherf, the you know, perennial Pro Bowl guard is out. How much does it stand out to you in your preparation, knowing that he's not going to be there and hoping that you guys can take advantage? I was looking forward to, to going against him because I, I want to enjoy that kind of competition, that kind of – that kind of matchup where I know, you know, whoever wins this, you know, you're going to have bragging rights for a while, you know, if we see each other again. So you know, I hope to see him in the future if you know, the cards fall right. But, you know, knowing that he's out and you know, we have another guy who doesn't have many, you know, snaps as him, not as many starts as him. Got to try to exploit him, showing some things that he hadn't seen before in his, uh, his career in the league. And you know, see what we can, what we can do with them, try to get him. No frustrated in this